what made me calm down because it was, y'all, listen, it would have been about to go down. And I was like, yo, I was prepared for that. I had already thought about that. I was like, you know what? All right, well, I guess I got to fight. I got mm-hmm. to beat up these two people. I'm mm-hmm. like, yo, I was at that level. And sometimes as a referee, you get put at that level. Mm-hmm. And you have to remember, this is what I said to somebody else the other day. You have to remember, despite how much someone's getting on your nerves, you have to remember the the, the level that you're on, the platform that you put yourself on. Mm-hmm. You put yourself there by mm-hmm. being that person that wants to give out this information. Right. So now we're looking at you, we're putting on somebody else acting XYZ, and you acting XYZ. Mm-hmm. How's that gonna work? How are you gonna, how are you gonna promote your brand? How are mm-hmm. you gonna do that? No one wants to see that. Mm-hmm. And we don't wanna see that person acting like crazy. Why would we wanna see you? So mm-hmm. Yeah, so another question I had for you was uh, timing. Like, uh, cause as this is kind of piggybacking off that, as the sport becomes more commercial, to be more of a spectator sport, to be more visible, to be not a hassle for viewers. Like, you know, my my biggest peeve was that I was watching, I went to the King of the Court and I was watching a game from nine in the morning to almost eight o'clock at night. I was like, 12 hours? I don't know if I can ever do One this day? again. No, 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 well, it was the whole day, the whole day. Oh, all right, and well, then taking that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so just to piggyback off that, and of course you can chime in with your answer as well. Um, but yeah, you can start us off. Well, my opinion on the time limit, I think it's best for not only the players and spectators across the board to spread it out over time. Mm. You know, we squeeze everything into one event, but you'll get the best out of your athlete and you'll get the best show for the spectators mm. if the player is rested and mm. he has a chance because, mm. all right, you had a tournament, let's say the King of the Courts or any one of these huge tournaments. You have a record breaking amount of teams, 100 and something teams. Mm. They tell you be there at 9 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. We got 100 something teams, you got six courts. I know I'm not playing for hours. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know where I'm at on the bracket. Happened mm-hmm. to a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, and let me tell you something not playing makes you tired. All right. Uh, the list goes on. There's plenty of reasons why you shouldn't have everything jammed into one event. Mm-hmm. But I feel like if you were to have it spread out over time, one event, and it'll come down to like maybe like the, the finalists, mm-hmm. you should play that in one day. Right. You know, have those right. big events, right. and then two or three of the, the, the pretty much the finals or the quarterfinals mm-hmm. played in one day. You'll get to see the best because those players are only playing one game right. that day. Right. You know, when you see the best play in tennis or you see the best play, you don't see Kobe Bryant play five basketball games when you're watching his game. Right. Or, 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 or LeBron. They play. You, everybody gets happy to see him play that one game that one night. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you're going to play in such a big event, I mean, you should be able to give your best. Right. And I saw this at the King of the Court, and I just didn't know how much of it was the culture, how much of this was like, a survival round of the, which is like, you know, in the game, like in video games, like survival is like, you keep the same health, but you have to fight every mm-hmm. single guy. It's like, uh, Kadeem had played uh, Tim Torres in the semifinals, got to, cut to Timbo playing uh, Taiwan, and that game went was from, it was a huge difference. And then Kadeem, who played a, huge game but had who got to rest for about 45 minutes mm-hmm. versus Timbo who just had to play a serious game and then only got to rest for like 10 minutes mm-hmm. I saw that and I was just like whoa this is ridiculous this is like like not to take any way, anything away from Kadeem's win but I was just like that is tough like that is not I mean like if he if Timbo won that I, that would be ridiculous as far as athleticism but the fact that that advantage was there that rest time I was just like that has that has to there has to be something in there that you know kind of you know depreciates the the game a little bit. That's happening. I've seen it happen more than once where it determines the winner of the entire event. Yeah, it's, and you know these guys come out here they practice year round. There's mm-hmm. guys that practice for the king of the courts the day of the king of the courts. Yeah. If they lost, they're out there practicing. There's mm-hmm. guys that are devoted to the game that yeah. much, but it's because of time management. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, yeah. You know the the, the director's time management because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. there was no time. To give Timbo a proper break because mm-hmm. it was getting dark right, right, right. Yeah. And, then, and 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 now that all comes, it goes into a whole nother level. Now, if you can say that to the player that's been practicing, you can say it to the organizer. Mm-hmm. You, as an organizer, you put so much of your time and energy. You have a family just like everybody else. Mm-hmm. You know, you 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 sell drinks, mm-hmm. you do the brackets. Most promoters have made shirts. Mm-hmm. You know, you've gone through all those headaches of dealing with each individual player. Mm-hmm. You put so much into this event to have it end in a way that. I know you didn't want to end. Mm-hmm. You, know, you want to see the two best players bring the best out of each other. Mm-hmm. Instead, you have one of the best players playing against another um, top, top player, and one of them is burnt out because of X, Y, Z, you know, mm-hmm. for, for some reason or another. Yeah. As, as an organizer, I feel like there's only one way to get past that type of situation, mm-hmm. and it's you have to be conscious enough to know that 
there's not enough time to give a player a longer break than necessary. Mm -hmm. So those semifinal games should start at the same time. Mm -hmm. It right. shouldn't be one play first right, right. and then the next one after right. that. It should mm -hmm. be at the same time. Right. Even if one player blows someone out, mm -hmm. yep. then you know what? He's earned right. that little extra right. break. Right, right, right. It's Makes the same sense. thing in basketball yep. because it's a, it's a, in playoffs, it's the best of seven. Right. If you win four in a row, mm -hmm. you get extra well, time off right. than the other team that went to game seven. Right. So you just you earn that extra right, time right, off. Right. But in this in this scenario, you don't earn it. It's just been awarded to right. you, like uh, the way that the the cards. Okay. That's a very good point. Like, it was all the way back up to the person who's organizing. Yes. The bracket. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I think that a lot of organizers have been aware of. Mm -hmm. But for the spectators, mm -hmm. they decide to put one game on at a time so mm -hmm. everybody can watch that game. Yeah. To answer your original question about the time management, I think that that would be the best case scenario for the sport and the spectators, is to have the event spread over time. And I mean, it's going to take a long time to get catch on to, because if people are not used to that, mm -hmm. when, when these top guys come out and play in a tournament, they want to expect to win and get paid that day. That's mm -hmm. what they want. But, you know, having it spread out over time, there's some, you know, some good things that could come out of that. So I have a question. What if you're playing hot that day? This is, I have an answer to that. My next comment was about whether it goes into that question. Mm -hmm. So what you could do, because I feel like when you get to a certain level as an A player, like the a player, handball players, the understanding of handball is that A player is the best player. That's mm -hmm. what everybody wants to be an A player. Mm -hmm. Once you get to that level, it's like who's playing the best that day. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, if I'm an A player and you're a C player, obviously, every, even if I'm playing bad, I'm going to beat you. Mm -hmm. But when you have two top elite players playing against each other, yeah, Temple might be Kadeem. But guess what? We all know Kadeem could be Timbo. Yes. So if you're going to do it in that format, you spread out the time instead of having everything in one day, you can fall back on the original format, which the USHA had it, and have the players play around round, 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 best out of three. Mm -hmm. um, play two, I think two game 11s and a tiebreaker of 21, or however you, how, how you choose to do it, mm -hmm. best out of three. Mm -hmm. And that way you get to see who really is the playing best that day. Yeah. Because it's not easy to see it sometimes in one game. Yeah. You know, in one game, it's a seesaw. Sometimes you can see things go either way. Yeah. But when you have somebody playing um, best out of three, you see who really dominated that person. And okay. guess what? Sometimes it's one and one. Yep. Sometimes it'll be one and one, and you play mm -hmm. the tiebreaker. Yeah. The tiebreaker is what really comes down to who is that person. Yeah. And that day, you get to see the best, and that person is only focused on playing that person. Mm -hmm. How am I supposed to? It makes it so much more difficult for me to prepare for a tournament as a player. Mm -hmm. If you tell me my first round game is here, I have to think about him and then the person that's after that. And this is something I have to tell a lot of young players. They're like, oh, look, I got an easy bracket. I got to play against this guy. I was like, that's not a good way to think about that. Mm -hmm. I said, you're going to lose mm -hmm. with that, with that, with that thinking like that. You know, you only focus on the person that's in front of you. Mm -hmm. Person, you'll never play that person up there if you never get past this person. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, I'm speaking from experience. It's happened to me in the past. Mm -hmm. I play against somebody like, yo, who is this guy? I'm going to smoke this guy. I got to mm -hmm. play against this guy later. And then this guy smokes me. Yeah. And later on that week, when I go back to my party, they're like, Larry, who'd you lose to? I'm like, uh, I don't know. Right I don't even know who this is because I was young and I didn't lit. I was, I was so caught up in my own hype. I didn't pay attention to the person who was right in front of me. I'm glad. I'm glad I thought of this. Honestly, um, you guys might like this too. So my question is this: Do you think in Hamble it is better to go into a game to pr prepare to play a specific player or to go into a game and just perfect your game? So I'll give you an example. When rookie plays, rookie don't change his game for anyone. It's deep serve, kill. Like that's, you could tell, if, even if the second shot he hits is not a kill shot, he's trying to go for a kill shot. Like that's his game. I've never seen him change it for Gio, Timbo, Kadeem, no one. It's the deep serve to the left and I'm gonna shoot it somewhere. What, do you, what would you recommend, especially for C players, up and coming players, do you think that they should prepare for a specific opponent or just prepare to perfect their game? Well, that's a very deep question and it's not an easy answer. The reason why rookies' strategy worked for rookie is because rookie had almost everybody that he was playing against physically dominated. 6'2", 6'4", 6'3". He's in phenomenal shape. His his game was based off of, which most games are based off, being consistent, his endurance, he had his stamina was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So with those serves and his strategy, it kept the pressure on you. Mm -hmm. it kept the pressure on you. Mm -hmm. And what happens when you have somebody else that may not be in the same condition as rookie, trying to use rookie strategy, 
and just trying to stick to it, that might not work. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, if, if a person like me, I'm in no way near as good shape as Rookie is. I don't even have the power to take the pressure on you. I can't keep them on their own line and rip it. I don't have that ability. Mm. So if I go in with that strategy, just based off of your example, it wouldn't work. So, I mean, I think that you should be prepared to play everybody and try to stick to your own strategy within being prepared to play everybody. So if you have a go-to shot or a go-to strategy and it's working for you, stick to that. You know what I'm saying? But if it's not working, then you need to figure out something else. And mm -hmm. I think that's the difference between A players, B players, and C players. You know, mm -hmm. A players find a way to win a game. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's part of growing. When you get to that level, you know, like I said, once you become an A player, it's like a stalemate. Everybody's an A player now. Mm -hmm. Who's going to play the best? Yeah. And when you're an A player, everybody knows kill shots. Everybody knows spikes. Everybody knows passing shots. Everybody knows hooks. So now who's going to beat me to the punch? Mm -hmm. I'm going for the same type of passing shot you want to. Mm -hmm. So, you know, depending on my style or what my game plan is that fits me, for that particular game, I might have to switch it up. Mm. If I'm playing against rookie, I might not want to sit serve it deep. Mm. I might want to go for low serve. You know, if I'm playing against somebody that doesn't like low serve, I might have to switch it up. Because the same strategy doesn't work for everybody. That's one of the things that I thought really made Black Justin one of the most, he's my favorite player to watch play. And I mean, I've seen Buddy, I've seen Rookie, I've seen him out. He's one of my favorite players. I think maybe my favorite player to watch play. Because he had that, he had that, what I'm talking about right now. He switched up his strategy. Mm depending on who he was playing against. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, someone like Rookie, who we just now said, normally had his opponents dominated physically. He didn't have Justin dominated. dominated. Justin was in supreme shape. Mm -hmm. he, was one, he, was, he was no body fat at all. He was ripped up. Mm -hmm. And Rookie's strategy fit Justin's game. Mm -hmm. His power and all that stuff fit right into Justin's style of play. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, they, yeah. and, and that's why Justin mm -hmm. did so well against Rookie. You know, I mean, he did well against everybody at that time. He dominated the game, but, you know, that was just a good example for your question. You yeah. know, so it, with Justin, you'd see him switch up his service, switch up his strategy, depending on who he was playing against. Yeah. I mean, it's not like he would start, he would change up his um, his style, but his strategy, mm -hmm. he would switch up because he was one of the few players that did have different ways of hitting the ball. He had more than one way of hitting the same shot mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. each hand, right. you know. And not for nothing, we all see rookie style. Rookie doesn't whip the ball, mm -hmm. you know. He doesn't, he doesn't have that. It's not part mm -hmm. of his game. But, you know, other players do have those different options. Timbo, Geo, they have stiff arms, whips, they have all those different options. So when things aren't going their way and what their strategy is, is may not be working at that point, they have other things to switch up and try right. to do. So that serve deep to the long line may not be working for them that day, but guess what, now they can throw a hook serve at you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. No, you're right. I like that. I like, yeah, I, I feel like Timbo at this time is superior in exposing the weakness. Mm -hmm. Like, in everyone's game. Mm -hmm. And I can't think of one for him mm -hmm. particularly, but for anyone else, like I've seen him when he was playing Migs. Mm -hmm. Migs was hot mm -hmm. indoors, Riga, like two years ago in a singles tournament in the finals. Mm -hmm. And Migs was beating him. Mm -hmm. And Migs has a sweet spot. Mm -hmm. Everybody, like if you watch Migs' game, yeah. he's got a strike zone. Mm -hmm. And if you hit this ball anywhere mm -hmm. here to mm -hmm. either of his hands, he's killing him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it was like 17 to 8. Mm. And Timbo realized it. And the rest of the game was just lobs. Mm. So Mix is hitting everything up here now. Yeah. And Timbo won that game. Wow. And it was just... That's a big level play right he just there, He completely switched up his style of mm -hmm. playing in the middle. It's an in-game adjustment. Yeah. My second question is, do you think we should eliminate the C division? Yeah. <laughs> now, that's a loaded question. That when we get to it, I'm going to tell you why. Because me and Nietzsche have been battling for a week about this. Because I told him, I understand why the C division doesn't make sense to A players. And, and if you're a spectator, you want to see something interesting. But as a host, it's lucrative. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of money in the C division. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll, we'll start with this question first, the C division. And then we'll go with the, with the rules later. But in my opinion, the C division...